YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, coming to you from La Mazental Abbey, or however you say that, where Falcon and his High Elves are going to take on Archon's cousin, apparently, who is a an orc. We won't ask questions about how that family got together, but we're going to see an army that, um, remember I showed you all at one point how good savage orcs were when they're getting buffed up by the big wa, and um, also getting buffed by... Uh, yeah, Big Wa and the regular Wa from their their warlord. I'm gonna slow it down just for a minute so we can get a handle on what's about to happen. So a big line of savage biggins, um, and they're hoping to overwhelm the high elves. But here we've got a prince on a sun dragon, another sun dragon, and then the uh, infantry line, a couple of white lions. Eh, eh, not great units, but uh, we've got some leather and sea guard up front. There is a keeper of the eternal flame here, which is a very tough unit. Um, so we'll see how that one comes out of this whole thing. Got some squig herds moving from the flanks, as well as some orc biggins. But uh, obviously the elf player here is hoping that the dragons and the sea guard can do a ton of damage while the infantry line does manage to hold. And uh, basically greenskins are weak to large targets. There's also a lore master of Hoeth here as well. Maybe trying to spirit leech down uh, the enemy leadership, we'll see. Anyway, you can see a lot of damage that comes in already. There comes the wall, and we're going to see if the uh, the uh, big wall backs him up. Looks like it's about to, maybe? Uh, I don't see a backup um, of using the big wall to further buff units. In fact, right now, one of the things you would probably want to do is Keepers of the Flame. I think they have physical resistance. Yeah, they do. So you'd want to be using the Fist of Gork right now. But right here in the center, um, this lore master came in here and just smashed this orc shaman. And then the dragons have pounced all over the place. And you can see that the uh, savage biggins, while they're very tough, and they, they weren't quite properly buffed here by the greenskin player. So I think there's a bit of a mistake that came around, but still demonstrates how um, these units can still be broken up from a leadership standpoint. Savage Biggins, while they're under Frenzy, um, do temporarily get the uh, immune to psychology, but you can still break their leadership. Being immune to psychology and having unbreakable are, are two different things, right? So, two different things indeed. This dragon may be getting ready for a breath attack, maybe. This one's taking out squigs. Nope, this one's going to come land. And you can see now the green skin unit's going to regroup. Looks like the breath attack's gonna come out there a little further from the uh, prince. He's gonna get some damage done. Squigs are berserking. Definitely still a lot of green skins left. And um, other than the uh, keepers of the flame, there's not a ton of tough high elf units left. There's a bunch of archers, which the archers in the right spot can definitely get some damage done. They're gonna go for these boar biggins. Not a bad target. But you can see over here the savage orcs just slicing their way through. Savage biggins, orc biggins. Orc biggins are an anti-large unit, but they're they're very poor against uh, targets that cause um, terror. That's one of their biggest downsides. They do decent damage, but they're just kind of squishy, and their leadership's pretty squishy. I definitely like the pick of the dragons against the greenskins, to be honest, though. I think greenskins, that's still probably a weakness of theirs, is dealing with large targets. It's not impossible for them to do so. They've got all those light cavalry and then armor sundering uh, archers and stuff like that. Um, so they definitely have some ways to deal with large units, but, I mean, I, I do think it's harder for them. Just gonna get a view of this as the, uh, you can see all these savage biggins coming after the dragon. And I really don't think they'll be very effective. Actually, they may be attacking the lore master. We got another dragon over here again, just diving in amongst all these units. Biggins or not. Dragons, it's gonna take a long time for anti-large infantry to beat down dragons, unless it has armor piercing. So I just don't don't see the greenskin units here being terribly effective. The keepers of the Eternal Flame are just absolutely slaughtering greenskins. They have high armor, which protects them. So that was a beautiful breath attack in the background. Here comes another one. Let's catch that. Oh my goodness, that was just devastating. That unit caught it straight from the flank. So the dragons using their breath attacks to pretty good effect here. 115 kills here, 69 kills on the Prince. And although Wurzag survives, he won't survive long enough. And with two dragons, Wurzag's effigy to get all of a sudden uh, won't be quite as effective because he's got to deal with two of them rather than, than one main target. 
Yeah, the Greenskins just don't have an answer <laughs> to these Keepers of the Flame on this battle. They are just trouncing everything that they get in contact with right now. Black Orcs would trade well against that unit, potentially. But that physical resistance is big. Um, and again, remember, I think that's on all Phoenix Guard. If I remember right, there's some physical resistance. I could be wrong. Um, these guys, just make sure I remember. Yeah, this Mark of Assyrians, one of their specialty abilities there, where when they die, they also potentially take down an enemy unit with them. Yeah, I think that the uh, the enemy here, uh, the Greenskins in this case, um, didn't effectively use the Fist of Gork, Wa, and Here We Go all at the same time. If this army is going to work for the Greenskins, you have to put one extremely hard punch down on your enemy, and you have to do it very quickly in order for it to be effective. Very quickly. Um, so at least that's the way that I've, I've seen it as we've gone through it. I do want to test something with Zover. I'm actually going to take the Keepers of the Eternal Flame against a Savage Bigun who gets a proper buffing um, from the from the uh, two greenskin hero types that we saw in this battle. See, that's that mark of Assyrian here. If you watch, if one of these uh, Keepers of the Flame does die, they go up in flames and, like I said, take enemies with them. It's pretty cool. But, interesting game. Um, I know that there's a lot of mistakes there, potentially, from the greenskin player, but I thought this was at least a fun demonstration of how the elves could overcome such a thing. He put these uh, Pure Main Company and the Keepers of the Flame out there. They absolutely wrecked. Um, and then you combine that with the fact that the dragons can do damage on blobs and the green skin player um, Should have done a little bit better buffing. Let's just go do a quick test on that. Like I said, just want to Show you all what happens here So if I pick the green skins because I want to do the uh, appropriate Buffing here. Let's stick Warzag on his uh, hog so we can get around a little faster and let's just um, from a spell standpoint Let's assume that he brings some of these things. Gaze. He doesn't need gaze. He wants Fist of Gork. And but here we go. This is the way you would deck these guys out, potentially, for this thing. So put them on here. Wouldn't need that. And I wouldn't need all the spells on here. You probably just want um, like that. Yeah. So you probably just want to do something like that, and then let's bring, um, we'll bring one Savage Biggin. And then on the other side, we're going to flip over here to the High Elves. And we'll just put a generic Prince behind the army here. And take off all the abilities, so we don't necessarily see a whole lot of that influencing. It's Keepers of the Eternal Flame, 1650 is the cost, right? So this shouldn't be close. Keepers of the Flame have the Prince right next to him. This should be a stomping. That very well could be what happens here. I'm just kind of curious. Like I said, I want to see what happens when you when you give these Savage Orcs the, the, the kind of buffing that you can, especially when you get your Winds of Magic all built up. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the fight. I think the AI is probably on defensive. Yeah, they are, which means we can go ahead and let the Winds of Magic build up. All right, so give me just a second here. We're going to fast forward through the Winds of Magic. We're probably close enough. Let's go ahead and start moving forward. And like I said, we're going to do this properly here. Now, the AI is in a pretty blocky formation. And I don't, I mean, I will end up overlapping them a little, but I'll try and minimize it. Okay, we go ahead and attack. Okay, what? And then let's do a fist of gork. And then as soon as Wa wears off, I'm gonna put some more. See, they're doing extremely well in that fight right now. Let's just go ahead and keep all this going. Just because we can. That's the reason why you bring both these shamans here, right? Look how well these savage orcs are doing 
against that unit. Let's do a little help here for those by taking this prince out of the fight for a moment. See how you can kind of just alternate? You can just keep the buffs coming. So 118 attack. They're doing magic damage still. So you can see even against with a prince, with the 1650 gold unit, these green sins are still pretty much going toe to toe here, even without the help of their lord. So we'll have potentially another fist of gork here, which we definitely want to use. Let's see if we can use that to good effect. I mean, just again, look at the trade here. The trade's incredible, and this is remember there's mark of Assyrian in here. So as we kill these guys, they're doing damage to us. But see, that one's going to bypass their physical resistance now with the magical damage back in play. So again, I think the green skin player did himself a disservice there because you see that with the proper buffing, I mean, people people still tend not to believe me about how strong these savage orcs are. Folks, they're strong. They are very strong. It's no joke. <laughs> if you get enough magic and two big wah casters, you can do insane damage. Insane damage. So look at this. This is with the prince interceding. And these guys are going to wreck at Keepers of the Flame. You might be like, well, Air, you didn't give their Prince any abilities. And your guys, I, I understand that. I know. In a real battle, though, it is very, very possible. You just saw a real battle where the Greenskin player brought these two casters. This unit was present on the battlefield. Yes, there was dragons. Yes, things could be quite different. I'm just showing you. In the proper opportunity, these units can be insanely effective. Look, two chevrons. For having killed this unit they're almost done with it we don't have yet and see look we got another fist to work see just how much magic you can summon up with this too so now it'll definitely be a finish for my guys you can see those keepers of the flame start to even it out but if you keep that magical damage coming they can't stand up to it so there you go keepers of the flame completely neutralized even with lord support by a savage orc biggin if my leadership will hold for like another second longer. Come on, do it. Do it. There we go. Right there. A savage big gun. A lord. And the keepers of the eternal flame. You guys believe me yet? I'm not saying it's unbeatable. It is. It's beatable. I'm just saying, do you, do you believe me yet? I know some of you believe me. But I, I still, you all wouldn't believe how many comments I got on the last time that I showed this. Air, that's not true. That doesn't work. Air, you're crazy. If you just use these things, they're so easy to beat. Sword masters are so much better. No, they're not. <laughs> I'm telling you all. And people will be like, well, I tested them one-on-one. -on -one. Well, that's, that's the problem, right? Anytime you get into a battle, the one-on-one -on -one testing is fun just to see which units by the stats are better, right? And sword masters by the stats are a better unit. And the savage big biggin but here's the thing those stats be what they are can sometimes include the stats that a leader will put onto that unit that's part of the strategy in warhammer right the leaders that i pick can augment the units that i bring to the battlefield they can help their certain abilities shine these guys also have physical resistance it's one of the reasons why they can shine they don't have much armor but they have a ton of hit points and when frenzy comes in they're dealing more damage they're dealing more attack. They are temporarily immune to psychology as long as their leadership um, is above 50%. And, I mean, these things, again, start combining that with the fact that they have almost 100 attack for long periods of time. They deal magical damage, so physical resistance won't save you. And, yeah, these guys don't do specific armor-piercing damage, but by the time they get all those damage buffs going and they're, they're doing almost 50 on a hit, I mean, it's going to do the damage. It'll take some time on an armored unit, but they'll do the damage. So, I don't know. Again, do you all believe me now? <laughs> Did I make a believer out of you yet? Tell me what you think. Again, I'm not saying this is OP or something. I think it's beatable. I think the green skins are very weak to large units like you just saw in that last battle. But if you try and go infantry toe-to-toe -to -toe with the green skins thinking, oh, I got sword masters or I got Harganeth executioners, it'll totally beat those. No, you won't. <laughs> not if the green skin player plays their cards right. So remember, the WA is now map-wide, and then you start using Fist of Gork to buff certain pockets, 
And then you can also use Ear We Go to buff a certain pocket, right? And all you gotta do is keep those spellcasters moving, use Wurzag's Effigy to get, and you might even be able to get a cheeky Lord assassination out of it. So, anyway, just a thought. Again, curious to get y'all's thoughts. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I will see you all with some more Total War Warhammer 2 action soon.